Okay. So, dear Devray, I have heard a lot of good things about this one. Um, not that I don't hear good things about Katie's kids, <laughs> um, but it's gotten a lot of widespread attention, which I'm really happy for, because you deserve it, Katie. You, can't, you fucking deserve it. Um, and it has a, a, quite a wide team, for example, it has an original soundtrack this time. And the presentation in, this, in the credits and in the menus are just, oh my god, they're beautiful, Jesus. Uh, and there's a voice, there's voice acting, there's original music, like, holy crap, it's pretty neat. Oh, there's me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a boo. I'm a, I'm a person. Um, so I'm really excited to start this one because I've heard so many good things about it and I'm eager to see what the fuss is about. I really like Katie's games. I really like your games, Katie, and I really like seeing and getting that attention. I'm really happy this released on Steam. That's a really exciting thing. So, uh, yeah, let's dive in and see what, what's up going on. Ooh, a little mini over here. I like that. That's really nice. I suppose I should start with a short summary of my life. I don't really feel like doing that, so I shall skip to the present. I run a reading group with several other women in the town of Newsome. Every Saturday, the members come to my house to discuss a novel, chapter by chapter. We're currently reading Pride and Prejudice. I thought it would be fun, but then I realized that everyone was a friend of Eliza Frame. Eliza does not like me. God knows why she joined the reading group. If she dislikes me so much, why join in? It's beyond me. But she does not like me. That much she has made clear. Always making comments about the state of my house. This week, she had the almighty nerve to complain about my window curtains. They're practically falling to pieces. No wonder you're not married, were her exact words as she rifled through them, revealing the inner, thinner layers. I keep those curtains in that position for a reason, I wanted to say. But I bit my tongue. Who does she think she is, the curtain police? It was trying enough when it was only Eliza, but now the others have been doing it. I have essentially been shunned out of my own group. Oh my god, girl, you gotta stand up for yourself. Funny how the amount of work I did organizing everything get forgotten and replaced with old curtains and teacups being the wrong color. Or whatever it is that isn't up to Eliza's standards. That's fucking rude, man. That's all gossip and politics. My word against theirs. I, I generally keep to myself, so no one really knows me. But they know her. Of course they're going to listen to her. I recently read about the effects of venting one's frustrations onto paper, of writing to no one with no intention of seeing the light of day. Sounds a bit doubtful to me, but I'm willing to try it. After I finish writing this, I'll go to the forest, just beyond the post office and leave the envelope under a rock where it will decompose. I'm almost at the end of the page. I thought this would work with helping to make me feel better. But it's not the same as actually writing to someone. It's like shouting down a hole. You're letting out your frustration, but no one can hear you. I'm not depressed. I'm angry. People hate me, and I hate them. I'm stuck having to see them every day at the shops, at the library. Oh, I am rambling at this point, and I am... People hate me, I hate them. I'm stuck having to see them every day at the shops and library at the book club and people are talking about another war possibly happening. Jesus Christ. Everything feels so uncertain. Alright, thank you. I'm really at this point and I'm wasting my time. I am wasting postage stamps and envelopes. But if you're going to do something, I think it's important to make a proper job of it. Including a return address and everything. If I'm going to be accused of one thing, it's not going to be of doing things by halves. Thanks for nothing, Angela Bard. 
dear Angela Bard, thank you for your letter. This Eliza Frame sounds like a right serpent. Well, I guess The Rock responded. Forgive me if that was too far. I generally keep to myself as well, and I often wonder how out of practice I am with even the smallest interactions. Your letter has interested me strangely. Please, write to me again. Yours sincerely, Mr. DeVere. Oh, it's De DeVere. I thought it was Devere this whole time. Oops. To Mr. DeVere, what kind of joke is this? Who are you? My letter interests you strangely. Well, the feeling's mutual. But you cannot expect me to continue writing to a perfect stranger. I don't know anything about you. For all I know, you could be some sort of dreadful con man. I don't know if I trust you. Voice acting is really good in this game so far. You wrote that you keep to yourself? Tell me, how is it that I don't recognize your surname at all? Even if you're a recluse, surely I would have at least heard of you. Tell me about yourself. What's your daily routine like? Angela Bard. P.S. I hope that I can trust you won't tell Eliza or anyone else about my letter. <laughs> laugh at the end. Ooh. Such decorative letters. There's like a bear. There's like a pocket over here. There's a bunch of leaves and shit. A lot of weird shit. Dear Angela, it seems as though you have, unwittingly, given a lot of information to a stranger who hasn't returned the favor. I agree that that is unfair. I shall use this letter to remedy that. You requested that I write to you a recount of my daily routine. It took me a great deal of thinking to try and make this letter not bore you. But if I have failed, please forgive me. I suppose I should write to you about today. Hmm. I took a walk through the northern part of Ardmore Forest, taking in the tree-scented air. It's the kind of air that can feel icy down in your lungs in the morning, but I strangely enjoy it. There isn't a path where I go, but I know the forest very well. To the north, there is a very old yew tree, so big that the span of my arms cannot reach halfway around its trunk. At some point in its lifespan, it began to lean, and now it tilts to a degree that almost seems to defy gravity, looking as if it could fall at any moment, but never doing so. It is beautiful. This yew tree creates a nice patch of moist shade that is perfect for growing mushrooms. I collected some. These were a variety of Scarlatina bolete, a round, plump mushroom that tastes excellent when cooked, and then went on my way. My days involve a great deal of walking. I leave my home, a furnished cave, well hidden in a large rock face, and take a wander. On other days, when there's too much rain, I'll stay inside, reading and drawing. This man lives in a cave. Okay. While I generally don't leave the forest, I have all I need. I find some interesting curios around the forest. A dropped book here, an abandoned picnic basket there. My home even has a phonograph in almost perfect condition. Several winters ago, I was lucky enough to discover that a human had left an almost unused case of painting supplies. Intrigued by the opportunity, I tried using it to paint. Hmm, you say human like you're not human, Mr. DeVere. What's going on here? My first attempts were quite alarming failures, but I continued to practice. What you are holding in your hands is the fruit of my labors. Oh, so he hand painted this, it's kind of neat. As I am writing this, I realize how much I'm leaving out. Let me tell you the whole truth here. You've probably noticed how I've used the word human instead of person. I may as well tell you now, instead of you inevitably piecing it together. Oh, so that's interesting. They're gonna put the twist right in front. You see, I'm not what you'd call human. There's no silver-tongued way of putting it. You'll want proof that I'm not mad as a hatter, of course you will, so I'll provide it. When you slumber tonight, I will send you a dream. Don't be stressed, I mean you only well. Please, yours sincerely, Mr. DeVere. P.S. 
I have a plan at getting back at Eliza, if you're interested. I knew it! Deal with the devil, bitch! To Devia. Despite my assumptions, I'm convinced. At first I thought you were perhaps a friend of Eliza's. That you were trying to play some sort of mind game with me. But after a night of trying to sleep, I finally did. And what I dreamt felt so real. I was walking through the forest, in a clearing. I found an ornate table holding a tea set and a serving tray covered in cakes. I somehow knew it was for me. I sat down in one of the chairs. Hmm. When I did, something inexplicable happened, as happens often in dreams. The teapot rose up and poured a cup for me, and a cup for another. You were invisible to me, but I knew you were sitting in the other chair. I looked down at movement on the ground. I could see your shadow and I saw horns. I had visions of fur and wolves' teeth and wings made out of feathers. I think I know what you are. But strangely, I did not feel afraid. Nor do I now. Do you understand? I enjoyed our tea party. After seeing both your letters, I was inspired to make my own illustrated envelope. I tried to draw the dream you sent me. Uh, what do you think? Right? This is fucking great. Like, Jesus Christ, you're already an expert watercolor and, like, zero experience. Like, you should be fucking proud. I have lots of questions. Can you do other magic? Do your letters go through the postal service? What do you look like? How old are you? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm being rude. I just want to paint a picture in my mind's eye. Yeah, I was also wondering if his letters went to the postal service because they were stamped by the postal service. So, you like taking walks? I was born in Australia, but moved to Scotland when I was a wee child. In Australia, my parents would have me go on long hikes with them in the bush. And we kept this tradition in Mull. I think I complained about it as a child, but now I look back at it fondly. I live alone, which I like. I don't mind the isolation. In fact, I enjoy it. God knows why I wanted to start a reading group with the other women in the town. Which, once again, brings me back to the subject of Eliza. What do you have in mind for getting back at her? Signed, Angela. So is this a kinetic fan? I thought it would be a... Uh... Oh, interesting. I thought, I thought this would have choices in it, but I guess not. The key has been added to your inventory. Is metallic, ornate, and well polished. Can I say? Uh, preferences. I do not want that. Uh, menu. Uh, yeah, these menus are really good. Katie, you really outdid yourself with this. Are there going to be puzzles? We found a cupboard. It is hidden near a corner, close to the ground, but it looks dusted and well used like a, the owner opened and closed it frequently. It is locked. Click. There is a bundle of letters inside. Act 1. Oh! So, yeah, that was just a prologue. I forgot. Did someone find their letters and is reading them now? Is this, are we the letter finder? Are we the letter finder? Dear Angela, What? Magic isn't enough for you. You want more? I joke, but I'll try to explain my abilities, though it's difficult to properly articulate them. Firstly, I can pick up any object and detect where it came from. I hold it in my hands and concentrate. It's how I found your address. It's like looking through a keyhole. If I can concentrate enough, 
I can go further and feel where the object originally came from. For example, the stamp collection I found was from a poet from New Sorn, but the stamps were originally printed in Britain. If I tried my hardest, I could perhaps find out that the paper used to make the stamps were from a tree cut down in Canada. Canada makes an appearance in every... Canada makes an appearance in every... <laughs> my powers don't extend to making letters appear from thin air, so I resort to a more human method. The post office is fortunately just beyond the edge of town, so I drop off my letters when no one's looking. Then there's the dreams, which you experienced firsthand. I put myself in a sort of meditative state and can walk through humans' dreams, manipulating my surroundings while I'm there. While I can influence dreams to an extent, I cannot speak in them. While I do have a true form, I can take on many others. In a way, all my paintings are self-portraits. It's silly, but when I read that you wanted to know what I look like, I felt oddly exposed. I don't wish to explain my appearance, even vaguely. Perhaps it's better if you picture me however dashing or gruesome you wish. I'm old enough to think for myself, but quite new compared to others of my kind. I can't give you exciting first-hand accounts of the 18th century poets who used to walk the Isles of Mull, cutting each other with their tongues and pens. But I'm not so young that I don't know how to cook mushrooms alone. They were delicious, by the way. Here's my plan. On the night before Saturday, I shall give Eliza a very specific dream. During the day of the reading group gathering, act natural. If she gives you any trouble, gather yourself up, look her in the eye, and tell her to stop wailing like a banshee. Tell her that verbatim. Please write back to me and tell me what happens. If Eliza doesn't change her tune, I can always send her a nightmare or three. Yours sincerely, Devere. Wow, this is a terrifying entity. P.S. I loved your postcard illustration. It's the line work of someone who has practiced drawing for years. I had no idea you did art. They're gonna bond over art, baby. Dear Devia, today I had a very strange experience. I ran a book club. The five women came to my house again to review the chapter of Pride and Prejudice. We were talking about Elizabeth Bennet's rejection of Mr. Collins when Eliza's biting nature came out once again. She compared me to the character Elizabeth, a woman who will never find a man who truly loves her because no one would be attracted to her prickly personality. The irony of Eliza not knowing how the book ends did not escape me. Yeah, clearly someone hasn't read their friend and prejudice. I did exactly what you had advised. I stood up, looked her in the eye, and told her to stop wailing like a banshee. The effect was immediate. She stood there, still as a stone, with a look of shock as if I had struck her. What on earth did you show her? After that, she stopped spitting venom at me for the rest of the day, only speaking to talk about the novel. Whatever you did, Devia, thank you. Hmm. Why are my acts on this game anyway? For this envelope, I tried to draw the town. I even pulled out some old paintbrushes I had in storage. Um, this is the path I take to send off my letters to you. Can you visit me sometime? I... I want to meet you. Signed, Angela. Dear Angela, I'm afraid visiting your home would not be possible. Aww. An old magic prevents me from entering the town. I could visit you through your dreams, but I'll always show up hazy if I appear at all. And I'll always be unable to speak, which doesn't make for fun or witty conversation. It's not the same as the real thing, is it? I'm sorry. As for Eliza, I simply took her insecurities and amplified them. Let's just say that your exact words to her would have ignited a memory. Don't worry, I didn't traumatize her. I merely had her take a good long look at herself and how she treats others. Don't let Eliza's words get into your head. 
you have many qualities that are attractive, and anyone with an ounce more sense than a teacup will see that. Thank you for sharing this correspondence with me. I don't generally get to talk to others. Yours sincerely, Devia. What does a two five on that letter mean? Hmm. Dear Devia, oh, fresh flowers. Be careful, lest in casting out your demons you exercise the best thing within you, Frederick Nietzsche. Dear Devia, that sounds so tragic. Because you've given me so much comfort through your letters. A strange thing happened the other day. Another woman said something nasty, but instead of saying something back to her, I didn't. I just felt unpleasantly sorry for her. The realization that she was just a person who didn't understand came crashing upon me. I thought about the advice you gave me. The reason why I'm not married is not because I don't wish to be. Like Elizabeth Bennet, I've rejected the advances of men in the town. Even as recently as a few weeks ago. No. The reason why I've never married is because... I haven't found the right person. Or rather... Because I... Hadn't... Found the right person. Oh my god. This is like the sixth letter. Are you proposing to the, the Eldritch Horror? Devia, There's something I need to say. I've... I've developed feelings for you. Oh my god. I love you. Oh my god. Oh, it feels good to confess this. To commit it to paper. And if you're reading this, it means I found the courage to deliver it. Do you, you return these feelings? I worry that I've destroyed something wonderful we already have. I pray this is not the case. Love, Angela. Dearest Angela, how can I not return your feelings? Your letters brighten up my existence. When I wake up, I look forward to walking to the edge of Ardmore Forest to see if you've left me a new addition to our correspondence. When I got the part of your letter where you told me your feelings, I felt whole. Like a void I didn't know being healed. I love you. It hardly sums up my feelings, those three words. I can feel my heart racing. I love you. I will show you this poem I've written. It's soppy, I know. But forgive me. When I think of you, I am undone. It was by yonder fell and glen I saw the fairest maiden. And since that day, with yearning pain, my heart was sorely laden. I love and worship you, dear one. For all your troubles I shall quell. I will take these fires for you. I fear not fate nor hell. So demons have been mentioned, and now hell is mentioned. So is Mr. Devery some kind of demonic entity? Be well, Angela. Yours, Devere. Two, baby. Hello. Oh, I didn't forget. Sorry. Evening, Inspector. Have you found Miss Bard yet? Not yet. I'm going to return to the abandoned cave tomorrow morning. I hope to find more evidence. Very well. Let me know if there are any advancement developments in the case. Yes, sir. Goodbye. Oh, back to. Hi, what's up? Hello, Devere. I'd like you to send me back the letters I sent you. Can you please do that for me? And one more. To Mr. Kalin Calwood, I am not a fool. Angela never uses that style of paper. She also handwrites her letters. 
but I assume that you couldn't properly imitate her handwriting because yours is too different. I knew it! Knew it was a faker! <laughs> you couldn't even use your own typewriter. This is the one from New Sorn's library. The one with the crooked E. Your letter is a sad, failed attempt at forgery, and an even sadder, loathsome parody of Angela's originals. Do not try this again. Signed, Devere. Hell is empty and all the devils are here. More devil and hell things going on here. Oh, that rhymes. <laughs> Dearest Angela, someone tried to contact me. I don't know this stranger, but I know that his name is Kaelin Calwood and that he's from New Sorn. He wants our correspondence. He made a pathetic attempt at trying to impersonate you in a letter against my better temperament. I sent him a reply to go to hell. Hell again. But this letter greatly concerns me. He even left it at the usual spot. How did he know about that? Has he been doing anything to you? I will send him a nightmare to frighten him. My days are filled with thoughts of you. Please, take care of yourself. All my love, Devere. Hmm. Stay away from... Dear Devere, I don't want to alarm you, but my house was broken into yesterday. I I'm alright. It happened when I was out buying bread and paint. I came home to find the front window smashed with a length of cloth covering the frame, as if to protect someone from the glass shards as they climbed through. It was Kaylin who broke in, I'm sure of it. But I don't have any proper evidence. I checked around and found nothing missing. Even though I had some valuable silverware and some jewellery that a burglar could have easily gotten to. That fits in with my Caitlin theory, but it's not enough to get him arrested. I have yet another confession. Caitlin was the man whose advances I had rejected less than a month ago. He is an appalling young man with a sort of brutish rudeness of someone who doesn't realise he is being rude. He lacks self-awareness. Those are the worst people. <sighs> He hates books and anyone who doesn't think he's right all the time. I haven't told a soul about you, Devere. You are my secret. The reason why Kaylin knows anything about us is because he has been following me. In the corner of my eye, I keep spotting him. In the library, in shops, down the street. I realize now what he was looking for. He wanted to find out if the reason why I didn't return his affections was because I was seeing someone else. He must really want our letters. I've hidden your letters very well, but I want to give them to you where they'll be safe. Kaelin already knows about the rock at the edge of the Ardmore Forest. Something he could only have known from spying on me. And you cannot enter the town. We need another plan. Where can I meet you? In case the letter gets intercepted, write it as a riddle and I will solve it. Yours, Angela. Hmm. As a riddle? Oh, those are the curtains. Those are the curtains on the letter. That The drawing on the letter was the curtains that were... Um, that Eliza insulted. To oh, Angela. there's Morse code on here. I don't know what it says, but there's Morse code on here. I'm gonna take it. Yes? That's how you do it. Yeah, that's how you do it. I don't think we should continue our correspondence. Oh. So, the riddle must be in the Morse code. Now I want to know what it is. God damn it. Um. Okay, um, let's uh, shrink that a little bit. 
Okay, um... He has written... First letter is B. Then E. Then H. Hmm, what is the two dots? Um, is it? Well, what then? I guess it's I? It's I. Behind. P. S T O F F I C T M Skip that for now. Um, and I G H. Oh, mid the hind the hind post office midnight. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Nice. Well played, Mr. Devery. Well fucking played. Dearest Devere, I want to thank you for the time we spent together in your home. Tiger Tiger burning behind the force of night. Did he smile his work to see? Did he make the man land made the Yeah, this is definitely a fucking demon. When I waited by the forest, I feared that I had misinterpreted the code in your letter. Forgive me. Your cave is such a warm, restful place. So many books that the town's library doesn't have. Could spend forever sitting in your armchair, taking in each novel. <laughs> You'd never get it back. I don't understand why you never sent me a true self-portrait of yourself. You look like how I picture an angel. Like from one of the paintings of the Renaissance. I'll bet his appearance changes depending on who is looking at him. You are as kind as I had pictured. One day I'll need to return the favor and cook for you. I never knew mushrooms could have so many different tastes. I think my favorite were the ones that tasted like cooked pork from my childhood. The ones you called angel wings? When we kissed? It was magic. That's how I describe it. So gentle. And then you had the audacity to ask if it was an alright kiss. <laughs> You're so charming and you don't even know. <laughs> Hopefully me telling you this doesn't go to your head. When you asked if I wanted to stay the night, I once again became nervous. I wasn't sure what you wanted. I saw there was only one bed and the armchair, unsuitable for sleep. <laughs> but my worries soon dissipated. You didn't ask anything of me. You simply lay down next to me and fell asleep. <laughs> As I lay there between layers of cloth and furs, drifting between sleep and consciousness, I opened my eyes. I saw you walking away to gather more kindling putting on a thick coat. 
from my misty, tired vision, it seemed like you had changed your form. A wolf? At first, I thought I was still dreaming. It felt like a dream. But I know it was real. I also want to thank you again for the ring. It's a lovely gift. I didn't say I thought it was pretty to prompt you to give it to me. <laughs> Honest. <laughs> the emerald sparkles around the gold band as I walk through the morning sunshine. Rubbing the edge of the gem with my thumb against the band gives me comfort. Forever yours, Angela. Oh, oh boy, Calvin's not letting up. You son of a blotted out by the ink of a broken pen. You mangy dog. You bastard. You miserable dredge piece. I saw her walk into town this morning. She wasn't in her house all night. She didn't arrive until breakfast. You seduced her just to get her in bed, didn't you? Was it fun? Were you satisfied? Was it worth it? Do you have any idea who you're dealing with? I spent my evenings hunting with a rifle in the crook of my arm. and not some farmhand with a shotgun. Do you know that a rifle has better aim? That it, unlike shotguns, fires a single accurate shot? Think about it. What a bastard. I watched her pass by the post office many times. The two of you seemed close, I thought. I even thought it was a little charming at first. But you have taken us too far. Yes, you slept with a woman out of her own fucking free will and didn't have sex. What a fucking monstrosity. How dare she? How dare she be her own fucking person? Calvin, you're an asshole. You're just a homeless man in the woods. You're an animal. You don't even show your face at the town. The two of you do not belong together. I'm a calm and reasonable man, but consider this your final warning. You're not a calm, reasonable man. You're a... You're an over-the-top angry man. I'm not going to sign this. You know damn well who wrote this. Hmm. Moral indignation is jealousy with a halo. Wolf. Calvin, Calvin. I'm sure I don't know what you mean. Devere. P.S. I'm sending this as a postcard because your note is not worth the dignity of a letter in response. <laughs> nice. Crystals. Dearest Divya, I've burned your letter after reading it, as you've instructed. I hated doing that. It was such a beautiful letter, and I don't mean the envelope. I've committed every word to memory. There's nothing to be forgiven, you wrote. I'm touched that you're willing to wait for me. Would you really wait forever? You don't need to answer. I trust you. I want you to fully understand the gravity of that trust. There's no one else I really trust in this town. I can't exactly talk to the women at the book club about this. They'd think I was mad. I went to one of the policemen at the station desk and confided with him about Kaylin following me. The policeman behind the front desk was kind enough and said that he'll give Mr. Carlwood a warning. But I have my doubts that anything will come of it. Jesus, police are fucking useless. The police in Newsom are not known for being competent. They're mainly made up of volunteers, some of whom are friends of Kaylin. On my way to the library, Kaylin spotted the ring on my finger. He didn't say anything about it, but when he glanced at it, his face seemed to twist with anger and disgust. I suspect he's jealous. <sighs> I'm getting tired of this. I'm getting tired of us having to change which rock I hide these letters under. I'm tired of feeling like I've been worn down to a shadow. After spotting the ring, Kaylin tried confronting me about you. He thinks you're a drifter, a vagrant, and other names I won't repeat here. I was close to striking him with a fist. But instead, I turned and walked away. I am... Tired of having to dodge and weave past Kaylin just to contact you. I want to see you again. The Morse code I saw in your room gave me an idea. Be sure to peer out past the forest tonight. Yours faithfully, Angela. Oh, she's gonna flash Morse code in the sky, ain't she? What the hell? To Agent Morrell. Last night, 15th of May at 0.00 hours, I spotted the flashing lights on my bedroom window. I recognized the pattern of flashes coming from the outskirts of New Storm as Morse code. It was followed by another flashing light from another source, Ardmore Forest. I was able to transcribe the conversation in its entirety. 
Given these very tense times, I'm taking extra measures and sending you a copy of the transcript to take a look at. Talk to you and myself, and myself for the ease of reading. The transcript is as follows. Hello, Devere. Hello, I am here. Are you safe? Unsure, but things are unbearable. Need to leave town. Please wait one more night. We'll send plans through dream. Fine. Going to bed now. I love you. Goodbye, my love. Keep safe. End of transcript. What should be done here? It may simply be two civilians using Morse code, but it may perhaps be two unknown operatives communicating through code phrases. I will be waiting for their instructions. Signed, Agent Doctor, Intercept Operator. Wow. Okay, you got the agent with the government. Yikes. Yikes. Agent Doctor, going through our current codex and known code phrases, this transcript you sent me does not fit with any of them in significant way. The phrase will send plans through dreams and act me over as a copy of the The dream might be an apology visit for alcohol. While I believe there is no need to investigate further, I advise that you simply continue monitoring Morse code messages if they continue. You can also send an agent to look for hidden plans and the next shipment of whiskey sent to your store. If the messages continue, send me a follow up. Sign Agent Burrell. How goes the investigation, Inspector? I uh, give the evidence I found so far. I don't believe we will find this part. Is she dead? Thoughts. Inspector? Is Miss Anselbar dead? I uh, check the cable one more time. Perhaps there's a detail that I missed. Good. I wish for the case to finally come to a satisfying conclusion. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna have it, buddy. Act 3. Mr. Kellen Cowell. Looks like the beer. Kaylin, do you really hate me that much? You told me that you have two large dogs. Like it was a threat. I'm not scared of them. I'm not scared of your lies, and I am not scared of you. Let me make one thing clear. I won't let you set your dogs on anyone I care about. Signed, Angela. I'm oh, sorry, wrong hand, right? Chief Inspector Grand, New Storm Police, Fiat Lux. They all know. Calvin. Chief Commissioner Grand, I'm writing you about a man who has been living in Alpha Forest. While it may not seem like a police matter, I have a reason to suspect he is an enemy spy. He's a dangerous one. I need you to take action and capture him for questioning. I'll happily assist you and the boys who have been hunting him down if need be. Do not let this Mr. Debeer remain at large. Make him move as soon as possible. Jesus Christ, this man is a, such a jealous asshole. Like, what the fuck? I hate you, Cal Callan. Dearest Angela, what I have to say, I don't expect you to forgive me for this. But this is getting too intense, too dangerous. I lied to you. Gasp. I lied to you about everything. My powers, my supernatural nature, the dreams. None of this is real. You're lying right now, Deborah. The Deborah. first dream I sent you of the wolf and the horns? You didn't dream it because of magic. You simply dreamed that image because it was on the first envelope I sent you. And then I told you you'd have a dream. It was just a trick. It was just a magic trick. I misled you. And when you believed me, instead of telling the truth, I kept going. I kept fueling the fantasy. But that's all it was. I'm not your demon lover. I'm not a forest fae from one of your books. Kaelin, in all of his harshness, was right. I am simply a man who lives in a cave. I think he's lying to her to protect her right now. So, now you know. And now, because of me, you're in danger. So I shall do the right thing and end this. Forget about me. Go and live a better life. I'm sorry. God damn, man. These letters were found inside of a jeweled casket in a locked cupboard within a first game in Ardmore Forest. They were discovered and collected by the Bureau of Anti-War Operations, along with several documents related to the missing persons case of Angel Bard and Kaylin Catwood. Oh, he's also missing. The Bureau has no official papers for Mr. Devere. 
Dear Inspector, I'm contacting you to ask for your assistance in connection with the Bard case. After hearing your track record on making deductions, I have confidence you can bring this ongoing case to a sufficient end. The case is as follows. Shortly after the recent appearance of Miss Angela Bard, 12th of June 1936, an investigation was organized by the New Storm Police. My men, some of which were friends of Mr. Kalen Catwood, noted that he had not been seen for several days, which was not reported as everyone assumed Mr. Catwood had simply been taken leave for an impromptu hunting trip. He had last been seen shortly before Angela's last sighting, so the two disappearances are being seen as linked. Prior to Mr. Catwood's disappearance, 25th of March 1936, he had sent a letter to me claiming that Mr. DeVere was living in Arbor Forest as an enemy agent. Constable Victor and Officer McCurguson were sent out, but found no traces of a person living there. During an overnight manhunt for Mrs. Bard and Mr. Calwood in Ardmore Forest, a man discovered the half-eaten remains of an adult male. Oh my god. The body had been dead several days in the midst of summer, and the clothes were in tatters, leaving little for members of the force to identify. Two of Mr. Calwood's hunting dogs, identified by their collars and testimony from various friends of Mr. Catwood, were found nearby, bringing me to the conclusion that the, vic- that the victim was killed by Mr. Catwood's dogs, and the victim was not Mr. Catwood. So they were, the dogs were found alive, I guess. After asking members of the force who were friends with the Cal- Calwood to identify the body, none of them were able to confirm the victim was Calwood, while one was certain that it was not him. Further questioning led me to the discovery of Mr. Calwood had been talking to his friends in the pub about a Mr. DeVere, referring to him as a drifter. I ended up coming to the conclusion that the body found in Armour Forest was possibly that of Mr. DeVere, who had attempted to kidnap Miss Bard. Mr. Calwood had attempted to stop him using his dogs. Over these deductions, the next morning they asked us that Miss Bard nor to Miss Calwood. It has been nine months and the trail is going colder by the day. While I understand that calling you over to the Isles of Mola short notice is inconvenient, I hope this case will probably intrigue you. Signed, Chief Commissioner Van Mears, Royal Police. Hmm, now interesting. He found a small, ba- found a very, a small, very thin suitcase lying outside. It was as if it was abandoned by a- there by accident. Someone left in a hurry. I guess you were the inspector that they called. There are several papers inside it. You look at the top page. Third day, twenty seventh of May, nineteen thirty six. Five places to travel to with Angela. A to do list by Devia. Oh. Number one, see the ruins of Greece. The archaeological sites of Athens must be an impressive sight in real life. I've only seen the pictures. Taking Angela by the hand, we could walk together, looking at the ancient temples. Number two, ride on a gondola in Venice, Italy. If Angela wishes, I'll even do all the rowing. I'll stand up, oar in hand, while Angela dips her hands in the water, feeling the waters of Rome between her fingers. Number three, go to a boulevard cafe in France. Angela has confided in me that she has never tasted creme brulee. I plan on remedying that as soon as possible. Number four, go listen to a musical in England's Royal Albert Hall. We can sit on the balcony and listen to the funniest comedy or the most melancholy ballad. Number five. The Mountain Forests of Canada. Canada! It will be difficult to cross the Atlantic. Or perhaps not. I always seem to find gold when I'm in need of it. But breathing in the scents of Alberta's forests of pine and spruce will be worth it. The sight, touch, taste, sound, scent. I wish to show my love for her with every human sense, to experience the pleasures and delights of the world together. And soon now, we will be free to do that. I am a very lucky devil. Aha, demon and Regan. This is the evidence needed to track down Angela Bard, so she might use to send it to the borough as soon as possible. Hello? Inspector, I actually want more. Have you made any progress with the search for Miss Angela Bard? I have finished reading some letters I found at the cave site. 
Good. Please forward them to me once you're done with them. With respect, Captain, leave the sentence to the bird first. You heard grumbling through the telephone. Fine, fine. I also read, read your letter regarding the case. Ah, I've been reviewing my notes as well. Just off the record, what do you make of this, Devere? You think he was a more of than a man? Make my first save in the game so far. Da, 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 da. Oh, second save. I thought it was like first. Uh, I need to save and then say something. I forgot I mentioned it. What's for you won't won't go by you after all. The others will tell the story. I want to update you with an autopsy report. The victim's body was kept in a preserved condition as we could, but the time stopped for no one, even the dead. The coroner rechecked the body. He was able to find something he did not see when there had been more tissue. That the bite marks had gone through the jawbone. Mr. Cal and Cowan had two pointer dogs. They couldn't have been that far down into the bone. Huh? You mean the body wasn't killed by Mr. Cowan's dogs? The bunny force of a large dog is around 200 pounds. For the bites to be the body to be as they are, they would have had to have they would have had to double that. By the coroner's new assessment, I assume the victim was mauled by an abnormally large wolf. A wolf. Aye. You realize this that means the victim could meet Mr. Calwood then, since it wasn't his dogs that attacked. Aye, that I do. Which means that which would mean that Miss Bard is with Devery against her will. So then, Inspector, what is your verdict? Oh man. Oh my god. Uh Good news, Inspector. That's the best news I've heard in a while. The places have been out of the way beyond our territory. It's beyond my men's jurisdiction. Will your people be able to follow the trail? I'm not sure. I'll have to ask. But if it's possible, the borough will have an agent travel to those places with a description of the park. Well then, congratulations, Inspector. You were able to solve that which I was beginning to suspect was insolvable. I shall write a report as soon as I can. That night you hear a wolf howl. It sounds almost human. It's the most dreadful howl of sorrow you ever heard. And as you lie in bed, you wonder if it was a dream or not. And when you arrive the next morning, you know that question will haunt you for the rest of your life. Well, heck. Fear to fear. to feel that necessary closing investigation and call off the search. Really? That is disheartening news, Inspector. What happened? Piece of evidence that could lead to finding Mr. Devere and Miss Angela. Light a match. The match that you keep for your candles burn brightly. Toss the light, Mr. Devere. Get a nice little bucket of light. Point is looking straight, but turn the candle back out. How strange it is to feel like you know someone after never having met them. Watch the flames fade away in shiny embers, you realize you never truly know them. Like it should be. Oh, that's interesting. Epilogue. Oh, epilogue. I got an epilogue this time. Do you think you'll ever return to the Isle of Mole? 
No. Oh. Why not? I have nothing waiting for me there. Nothing good, at any rate. Do you not miss a single thing from the island? The town? The beautiful fields? The forest? Not really. Besides, you're here. <laughs> so where to now? Rome? Greece? Finish your sketch. I'm still sore you lied to me. I'm sorry. Lying to me about lying? <laughs> I mean, if you lied about having powers, then how could Eliza have had those nightmares? Exactly, that's what I was thinking. Thank you, Angela. So what you're saying is, I'm a terrible liar. <laughs> yes. Right then, you love me. Am I lying? <laughs> you're not lying. Okay. Well, that was a very satisfying experience. I didn't expect such a kinetic novel from someone I'd known to make a lot of mostly choice based ones. But this was very satisfying. I really enjoyed it. I think the art is excellent. Like, definitely a tier higher than I kind of expect from Katie's game.